Illyria betrays us and starts the void invasion of Quel'Thalas. If this did happen, as the truth teller Dorn is saying, uh, this would probably happen in Midnight, the expansion. We know that Quel'Thalas and all that area is going to be, you know, completely revamped. That is the Night Elf expansion, the uniting of the Night Elves and everything is going to happen in Midnight. We saw a version of this in the, one of the visions of Nazoth, if you remember, where we were in going in and Illyria had completely succumbed to the Void. She was actually giving her son to Nazoth at that point in a ritual after she had killed Torellian. So uh, is that vision going to come true? Maybe. Let's see what Doran, the truth teller, has to say. Illyria once caused a localized void invasion in Quel'Thalas when she just got close to the Sunwell, and for this... Oh, that's right, yeah. During, if, you, if you know, this happened during the Void Elf quest line. If you ever go there, yes, there was a slight void invasion when we touched the Sunwell. Void Elves were exiled. Illyria not only has a Void Naru inside her, but she's apparently getting whispers directly from the Void Lord inside her. Holy crap, what's going on? Themselves, and as <laughs> she states in the Void Within trailer, her whispers are not like the others are getting. Well, in Midnight, the Elves are reuniting at the last, which means Illyria and the Void Elves will return Definitely back be to relevant. Silver Moon again. And yeah. Lo oh, and behold, a massive Void Lord invasion will happen that will engulf all of Azeroth. Illyria and Zalatat's rivalry is going to be a huge thing in the new expansion, but seeing that we know what will end up happening, it seems pretty evident who is going to win the battle. What is Illyria up to? Is she going to willingly betray us, or is she going to get manipulated just as we will? If you want to start programming, but in a really fun way that will make you actually stick with it, yes. Boot.dev is Dev. the perfect solution. It is essentially designed like an RPG game with XP, levels, achievements, quests, but with full-on, legit, actual learning, oh, as you nice. will learn back-end web development from start to finish in Python and Go programming languages. The platform is designed to get you writing a ton of code immediately, which is the best way to learn. Learn the code, learn the code, boys. Now, the team use Boot.dev and use code. Everyone can pay for a membership right now, therefore all the content is free to read and watch in guest mode. The paid membership unlocks the interactivity of the program, however they are so confident you will love it that they have a free demo of every course and interactive mm -hmm. features and of course a 30 day no questions asked refund policy. So click the link in the description, check Dorn's out what Boot.net has to offer and That's use code. my code Dorn's, Dorn's movies. movies to get 25% off your first payment. That's 25% off your first year or first month depending on your subscription. So start programming and gaming today. Do it. Help the man feed his biceps. If you want to understand how the Void Invasion of Azeroth will be happening and why exactly it is happening with the Sunwell and in Quantalas, I think the best characters we can look at right now with the current information is Illyria Windrunner that has been set yeah. up as one of the main characters of the World Soul Saga. As they had already confirmed in an interview, her role is something akin to the antidote of Zelotet, like their rivalry is going to be a huge thing in the war within and midnight <laughs> despite the her. fact that they essentially both use the exact same force it is the void character the bad guy zelotet and the character that is wielding the same powers for the good of azeroth however i'm almost yeah. certain these lines i mean look Illyria and we know Illyria and zelotet they're very heavily featured in the whole you know pre um pre-expansion in-game cinematic thing that they showed us that they always show us before an expansion these two are heavily featured and because they're basically equal, equal and opposite forces. Now, I, I don't know if they're equal in power. Zalateth might be stronger than Illyria, probably. But they're both wielding the Void in different ways. You know, and, and, and that's very possible with the Void because they're not a single-eyes truth like the Titans are. Many truths, many paths. We, have, we see two separate paths here. How they're going to affect each other? Well, I guess we're going to find out in, uh, in Midnight. So going to get blurred soon and that Illyria is going to ultimately lose this battle. Now, I know it might sound crazy, but stick with me for a minute with I don't a know quick little throwback so that you can see how this is not only not a far-fetched speculation, but it seems very, very possible, especially considering we already know what will be coming soon. As you may know, the Void Elves are a relatively new addition to World of Warcraft, and you might know they were exiled by the Horde, giving Void Elves to the Alliance, and this wasn't really Really a crazy developed storyline. It was mainly an excuse to give the alliance these types of elves. They're yeah. almost entirely. I, I still think, honestly, I still think this was a mistake. They should have just given the alliance high elves. That made so much more sense considering they are already in the lore, still part of the alliance, and there are still high elves that exist. 
if you remember the whole Argent Dawn tournament, there were plenty of high elves there that were still alliance aligned. Uh, they exist all over the world. They're very few in numbers because of everything that's happened to them, but they're around, and their numbers could have grown over the years, and they could have just read, you know, officially become playable again once their numbers grew enough, but they were already part of the alliance. The Void Elves seemed like such a weird addition, and I still think they are, but I guess, you know, Metzen's back, and he's going to kind of play that lore a little bit to make them more integrated and flush out their story a little bit more. You think they just kind of made up on the spot, however... If you do examine the lore that we do have, they were never a really exiled exiled. It wasn't some huge, like, hatred-ridden banishment storyline like the Blood Elves can't stand the Void. Because, as you may know, I mean, they used to use completely openly fell magic. Yeah, they've used, and they used dark magic worse before. And even more dangerous than Shadow. And this was so mainstream for them that you had those, like, huge fell crystals all over Silvermoon. So, you may be thinking, I mean, really? Like, they do all these crazy things, they use all these crazy powerful magics but they really draw the line with the void well the storyline goes that Illyria arrived to see the new Sunwell and her presence in particular created essentially what was a mini void invasion and the blood elves can yeah this is he's describing the void elf quest line and uh, if you do it the second that you so going to the Sunwell is like a right of all um elves really blood elves but uh, all elves in general and uh, they were allowed, even though they were Void Elves, to go to th do their p pilgrimage to the Sunwell. And when they do, Illyria kind of reaches out her hand, and then Void creatures just start spawning everywhere, and you got to kill them. That's how the quest works. So some kind of interaction there happened where it led to a Void invasion, which is why the Sunwell is probably going to be very relevant to the attempted Void evasion in Midnight. Recently restored it, and after barely surviving the past decade, they were like, you better leave. I mean, we can't risk Yeah, they tell her to leave. Morthamar again. tells However, them, yeah. it's not like there is some intense hatred between the Void Elves and the Blood Elves, like they can't stand each other. In fact, Illyria even attended the wedding of Lorthamar and Talisra that happened quite soon. Now, on BlizzCon, Blizzard confirmed that the Elves are reuniting. In particular, a huge right. emphasis is going to be on the return of the Void Elves back to Quota Last, which will very likely turn them neutral. However... I'm like, yeah, I imagine the new revamped Silvermoon is going to be a neutral hub city. Most definitely. It's just there's there's so many elves on both sides, it's going to have to be. 90% certain with the current information that we have at the moment that this is going to be what is going to trigger the Void Innovation that will eventually engulf the entire continent. There are two big lore facts that you need to look at that happened rather recently that explain this, and both of these facts involve the Narrow. As you may know by the lore, Sunwell was the main fountain of power for the High Elves in the Eastern Kingdoms back right. when they were just exiled Highborn Night Elves, and it was created with a few hidden vials of the original World of Eternity that is technically a part of Azeroth's world soul. However, this Sunwell was destroyed by the Scourge, it was revived with the help of a full-on Light Narrow, and not really even helped, it's more like they captured the Narrow, they bound him there, yeah. and eventually <laughs> through... The whole Paladin, Blood Paladin, you know, uh, Blood Knight or whatever they call themselves, uh, yeah, that happens through the torture of a Naru, essentially. That lore has kind of been forgotten. I feel like a lot of people, when they play Blood Elf Paladin, they're like, oh, yeah, we're just like, you know, Uther and everyone else, but they're not. They're more of like a, uh, a torturous path to uh, to their control of the light than uh, the way a, a typical human would say, use the light. Well, and it kind of sparked the new Sunwell, but originally it was quite malicious. Now, here's a super interesting lore throwback from a few expansions ago. Do you remember that cinematic? And do you remember that at one point in time, Illyria had absorbed They're like a full-on yeah, Void Naru and still True. has that presence inside her? I'm almost 99% certain that this is what triggered that originally small Void incursion as the Dark Naru inside Inside her probably interacted with the Sunwell Narrow and it started just summoning the void like uncontrollably. Well, this mechanism. Yeah, that could be it. That could be it. She does have a Naru inside of her, so they could have, yeah, interacted with each other. Is going to be like 10 x and Illyria is very likely going to be responsible for the midnight invasion that will engulf all of Azor. Before we talk about Illyria, let us look at the Naru themselves. We don't, in fact, know all that much about we them, who the they really are. We have some lore, we have some very biased information, but we have no legit answer as to why can a being of pure light turn into a void being? Aside yeah, from still, the we're chronicle get that telling us the light and the shadow are two sides of the 
same coin, but even that statement is incredibly vague. I mean, what does that even mean? Like, how does that even work? However, we do have a really interesting whisper from our... Uh, she's had the light inside of her, technically, as well, tweaked, uh, you know, uh, her good, her, 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 uh, her husband. Yeah, her man toy, her boy toy has been inside of her, and he is a, uh, he is a lover of the light. The bad guy of the World Soul Saga Zelatad from a few expansions back that kind of explains this with a little bit of a different perspective. She essentially says the Naru are beloved brethren that lost the true path and that they will return to their masters in time. Seeing the Zelatad refers By to... By the way, I do think Torellian and Illyria's son is going to become relevant. You know, the child of shadow and light, I still think that refers to him. Some people say no. Uh, but I, I think it does. And I think he's going to get a new model and everything else coming up in the uh, World Soul Saga. He's going to become very relevant. Void Lords as her own masters, it is likely that the Naru are below the Void Lords on a power level scale, and apparently they might have rebelled from the Void in the ages past. I would definitely say the Naru are below the Void Lords in power, because, I mean, uh, we saw Illidan literally destroy a Naru. There's no way Illidan can solo a Void Lord. That would be completely ridiculous. So yes, the, 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 he's right about that power scale. They're not just below Void Lords. I would say they are significantly below Void Lords. Is why when they start losing the light when they're injured, they might revert back In to terms their of power original scale. state and they become something akin to full-on Void Beings. We can, of course, only really speculate on what this mechanism is going to be about, but what we can see for certain is that this will play a big role in the entire saga, quite obviously. First of all, I don't even want to repeat myself, the Light Crystal and Kazagar is obviously going to be a huge part of the new storyline and why it is turning into the Void. And yeah, second, fluctuates. you might have seen the season of Discovery shenanigans with obviously <coughs> Zelatad yeah. kind of traveling back in time and that strange Light Crystal that... I don't know if she's necessarily going back in time or she's going to an alternate timeline or it could be both she could be going back in time to in an alternate timeline that could be happening too i mean since wad that whole timeline shit's been broken so it could be either apparently fell from the sky why exactly is she there and what even is this crystal like why does the void being care about a light crystal so this inherent light and void connection is obviously going to be critical for the future of the storyline however let us now turn back to Lyria and why i think she will betray us and why she will be the catalyst for the void invasion in midnight once again let's just look at the void L quest line and a few other dialogue options that we have no, passed on one occasion we can examine a conversation between Illyria and Torellian where Torellian asks whether the downfall of the old gods had brought her at least a little have you ever talked about the lore when you are at the law firm office yeah uh, when, when I get an assignment uh my first my first thing is yeah uh, light guide me yeah that's exactly what I say light guide me little bit of peace of mind and she essentially confirms that not only did the whispers not end with the defeat of Nazad, but in fact, new voices have joined in. Then we have a little bit of a soft confirmation that Illyria is actually getting whispers directly from the big guys themselves, the Void Lords. And the way we can extrapolate this is that Lord Tamara accuses Illyria of getting the whispers from the Lords of the Void themselves and she doesn't exactly deny it. She doesn't deny now, it. Really. This makes total sense, and let me just tell you why. The Void Lords are completely different from all the other main guys of the Cosmological Forces. They're nothing like the Titan Pantheon or the Pantheon of Death or anything of the sort. We know the name of one single Void Lord, and that is the man the Old Devouring. He's the guy yes. that blew up the planet of the Ethereals that actually turned them into the Ethereals. However, according yeah, to... Yeah, but when he saw Demancius, we, we didn't see necessarily like what a Void Lord actually is. Or it's just like a i think it was i believe it was a shadow of his power or a shadow of himself or something like that so we've never actually seen a full-blown void lord in game and obviously we defeated demancius and so that's not his full power because he freaking destroyed an entire planet i mean we saw the ethereals are what they are currently just a bunch of like wispy ass shit held together by band-aids because of what demancius did the known lord there are multiple void lords as they're beings of the pure void and as is the nature of the shadow they all have their own like chaotic visions goal and aspirations so it is not one entity this means that it is entirely likely that the void lords are not even working as one akin to the titan pantheon in trying to control the universe but in fact it is entirely possible that one guy is the one that wants azeroth while the others don't even care about azeroth it is also possible that the guy that alidia is hitting from is not the master of zalatad and this 
this might play a big part in their rivalry and what is going on so we could potentially see the good and the bad side of the void however we don't yeah. even really need to speculate seeing that the expansion itself is called midnight and the huge invasion happens that apparently will spiral wildly out of control and it yeah. is pretty certain that Zalatet is going to succeed with her plans i mean there's no denying that so that kind of spoils the Zalatet Illyria rivalry a little bit and it's pretty safe uh, to say she's gonna succeed but i i do believe that um Chris Metzen at BlizzCon said we will push back the forces of the Void, that we will defeat them in Midnight. So does she succeed or do we? I, I think I, maybe she succeeds in her plan, but then uh, we end up defeating her in that plan that is going to outsmart Illyria as the invasion is going to happen directly in her homeland. Now, let's look at the Warbred cinematic, the trailer, the announcement features. Most of it is a setup for the expansion, as in like the fate of our world rests on the edge of a knife and the battle lies deeper. It win, comes after Zalatet succeeds Zalatet in helping and helping Deathwing bring the Twilight Hour of Twilight. Yeah, you're speculating right now, Archie, but yeah, it could be what you're saying. Sure, bring about the Hour of Twilight. It's called Midnight because Midnight comes after it. Yeah. I see what you're doing there with the language. Who knows? I wouldn't be surprised. That'd be pretty cool. But she says, my visions are not the same as the others. No radiance, no song, just a shadow taunting me from below. This obviously refers to the prelude to the War Within. As we know, a lot of the denizens are soon going to get the whispers from what they believe is the Azeroth's world soul. But right. apparently, Alilia is getting these whispers from the Void itself and very likely hearing from the same master that is currently puppeteering Zelatat. My speculation is Alilia will give us a huge amount of information, but she will never fully outsmart Zelatat. Like, Zelatat is always going to be... Yeah, well, I mean, Zelatat is much more ancient than Alilia. Illyria. She's seen much more, done, th been through much more. I mean, she was there at the origin of the Troll Empire and everything. I mean, she's been around for a long time. So yeah, I would say Zalateth is much more knowledgeable than Illyria. And she, I mean, she literally lives, she is part of the shadow, part of the void. Illyria is just learning how to handle that shit. But yet, another it's kind of like that old adage, you know, uh, from Batman. Uh, what is it? You, uh, uh, yeah, you simply uh, adopted the shadow. I was born in it, raised by it. The is that she will be Zalatet, but that will be her and our ultimate undoing. We don't know what will happen with Zalatet, we only know the Void does in fact invade. It is likely that in the War Within finale, we might face this big bad Void evil that is coming from within, and Zalatet herself may end up being defeated, and it is possible that just like how Valyria had absorbed that Void now in the past, she will absorb the Void powers of Zalatet. However, as you may know, that is essentially Zalatet's biggest strength. I mean, she has switched so many mediums <laughs> over the years from a knife to a void elf now, and if she gets into Illyria, that might exactly be what is going to trigger the might void be what she invasion wants. in yeah. Midnight. Now, whether Zalatet will play a role in this, we can, of course, only wildly speculate at the moment, but some things definitely seem obvious. I mean, Illyria's presence near the Sunwell caused a small void invasion already, and she and her newly created people got exiled. Over the years, they could improve the relations, the factions unite, she attends the wedding of one of the horde leaders. The faction almost entirely merged over the years as well, and we know yeah, that friends, all yeah. the elves will have a huge reunion that was announced, which happens after the events from the War Within. Alyria and the Void Elves are going to return back to the Sunwell, and a gigantic Void invasion is going to happen around the same time. I don't think it is a far reach to say that Alyria is very likely going to be responsible for this, especially since she is getting whispers from the Lords of the Void, and that she might just be the instrument that will open the gateway for them into Azeroth. Thank you Very for watching. Possible. Check out the Eternal Vulture by clicking on the awesome. screen, and check out my video on ancient Greek colonies in Spain by clicking on the screen as well. See you next time. Yeah, I, I know everyone likes to say, oh, Doherty speculates too much. He's in it, but I mean, I mean, there is some credibility behind this. He is right. That whole Void, uh, the Void Elf Heritage, uh, I don't know, the Heritage Quest line, or the one that brings them into the Alliance. Uh, definitely this event happens with the Sunwell and the reaction to it. We know the Void Elves are going back to Silvermoon. All that stuff's going to happen with the Uniting of the Elves. So I can imagine, yeah, the Sunwell, again, being the center of the Void Invasion. That could certainly happen.